Brooklyn Bridge has stood against the elements for well over a century, its massive form suspended by more than 14,000 miles of woven steel cable. Each strand is slender enough to wrap around a wrist, yet together they hold the weight of cities. What invisible power inside the manufacturing process gives steel such strength, flexibility, and permanence? To understand that secret, you have to follow the metal from its birthplace in the earth to its rebirth inside a roaring mill, where molten rock becomes the backbone of modern civilization. If you enjoy seeing how the modern world is built, from molten metal to skyscraper height, take a moment to subscribe. You'll want to see what comes next. The story of every cable begins deep underground, in a place where the sound of drilling echoes through chambers of red earth. High-powered rigs bore deep into solid rock, preparing precise holes for explosive charges. Each controlled blast fractures the ore face and frees blocks of reddish-brown iron that glint under the floodlights. Hydraulic excavators, their buckets large enough to swallow a car, scoop up the shattered stone and load it into mine trucks capable of carrying hundreds of tons. The air vibrates with the hum of diesel engines as these giants crawl up steep haul roads, ferrying their cargo to the surface. Enviato Stockpile Yard, the ore cascades into massive hoppers and drops onto a network of conveyors that stretch for hundreds of meters. Along the way, vibrating screens sift out dirt and sand, while magnetic separators pull unwanted rock from the flow. The purified ore, now reduced to smaller, uniform fragments, is stockpiled and then transferred into specialized rail wagons and ocean freighters. Each train carries thousands of tons at a time, feeding a supply chain that never sleeps. Extraction, crushing, and transport continue around the clock, ensuring that the steel industry never pauses for breath. Minions when those trains arrive at the steelworks, fire takes command. Mountains of ore and recycled scrap are charged into a massive electric arc furnace, a structure as tall as a building. From above, enormous graphite electrodes descend like pillars of lightning, sending immense electrical currents through the charge. Temperatures skyrocket beyond 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to liquefy rock. Inside the furnace, iron transforms into a swirling sea of molten metal that glows like volcanic glass. To perfect its properties, engineers add carefully measured alloys, manganese for strength, chromium and nickel for corrosion resistance, and silicon for ductility. Quicklime and floor spar follow, forming a floating layer of slag that absorbs impurities and protects the metal beneath. The mix is stirred continuously by magnetic induction and mechanical agitation. Every moment is monitored by laser sensors and spectrometers that check temperature, composition, and purity in real time. Precision is absolute, because even a small chemical imbalance can turn future cables brittle or weak. When the alloy is right, the furnace tilts and releases a blazing stream of steel into a continuous casting line. Unlike the hand-poured ingots of the past, today's molten metal is funneled through copper molds cooled by high-pressure water jets. The outer shell solidifies instantly while the core remains molten. As it travels downward, the billet hardens from the outside in, a glowing, living column of steel emerging from fire into form. These billets, still blazing orange, are sent straight into the rolling mill while they're thousands of degrees hot, preserving their heat for the next transformation. Here, massive rollers, each wider than a man is tall, turn constantly, flattening and stretching the billets with astonishing force. Every pass between the rollers reduces thickness and increases length, turning solid blocks into sleek, glowing ribbons of steel. The heat makes the metal malleable, while the crushing force realigns its grain structure, erasing internal imperfections. Layer by layer, the billet evolves into a shape ready for function. Round bars, flat strips, or long slabs, depending on its future as wire or beam. The entire sequence is timed down to the second. If the metal cools too soon, it cracks. Too late, it softens and warps. The rolling mill is choreography in steel, a balance between brute power and precision engineering. From here, the semi-finished products enter the cold rolling line, where the transformation becomes even more exacting. The glowing bars are cooled by powerful water sprays before being fed through another series of smaller rolling stands. Each set of rollers applies immense pressure, thinning and elongating the steel further, converting it into finer rods suitable for wire drawing. Wire drawing is where raw power turns into finesse. 
The rods are pulled through a succession of dies, each slightly smaller than the last. With every pass, the diameter shrinks, the surface polishes, and the internal structure becomes denser and more uniform. This process takes place at room temperature, where friction, pulling force, and speed must all be perfectly controlled. Too much tension and the wire snaps, too little and it loses shape. Modern plants rely on laser-measured feedback systems that track diameter continuously and adjust pulling speed in milliseconds. The result? Steel wires with microscopic precision, smooth as silk, yet strong enough to lift bridges. Coiled at the end of the line, they gleam with the subdued shine of engineered perfection, each strand an invisible promise of strength. Stimulate it easy to overlook what this transformation represents. From ore buried in rock to wire drawn thinner than a finger, the steel has undergone thousands of mechanical and chemical reactions. Each stage has stripped away weakness and added resilience, forging not just a material, but a legacy of reliability. Before the next chapter, where fire once again changes everything, the steel has already proven one truth. Perfection isn't born. It's manufactured through patience, heat, and pressure. After wire drawing, the steel may look complete, but strength isn't simply about appearance. It's about endurance under time, tension, and heat. The next phase will forge that endurance, transforming precise wire into something capable of carrying the weight of the modern world. If you're fascinated by how raw materials become the skeleton of civilization, make sure you're subscribed. We reveal the world's manufacturing marvels in their truest form, from fire to function. The drawn wires enter the heat treatment stage, a process that alters the metal's internal architecture. Coils of wire are fed into long tunnel furnaces that glow from within, each chamber calibrated to temperatures between 500 and 700 degrees Fahrenheit. The atmosphere inside is tightly controlled. Engineers manipulate gas composition, heating rate, and flow speed to ensure uniformity. As the wire glows red, molecular structures rearrange. Crystalline grains stretch, realign, and reform, creating a lattice that balances hardness and ductility. This delicate equilibrium is the secret to a cable's dual personality, rigid under weight, yet flexible in movement. As soon as the ideal temperature is reached, the wire exits the furnace and plunges into a quenching system, where jets of high-pressure air or baths of specialized oil cool it in seconds. The rapid temperature shift locks in the steel's new internal structure, freezing its strength in place. But durability means nothing without protection. Steel's greatest enemy is not heat, but time, and its tool is corrosion. To defend against it, the wire moves into the anti-corrosion coating line, where each strand receives its invisible armor. Before coating begins, the steel is scrubbed of every trace of oil, dust, and oxidation using an acid bath. It's a reset, cleansing the surface to ensure perfect adhesion. Once clean, the wire is submerged into a bath of molten zinc or passed through a polymer coating system. The temperature, immersion depth, and withdrawal speed are all precisely calculated. Zinc galvanizing forms a chemical bond that prevents rust from taking hold, while polymer coatings shield against salt, chemicals, and moisture. Both create a film only microns thick, but that film can mean the difference between a bridge that lasts 50 years and one that needs repair after 10. Permissions is vital. Even the smallest air pocket can create a weak spot where corrosion begins. That's why technicians monitor every millimeter with optical scanners that ensure complete coverage. It's quiet work compared to the roar of the furnaces, but this silence hides the precision that defines industrial craftsmanship. When coating is complete, the wire moves to the inspection hall, the proving ground where every flaw is exposed. Here, advanced sensors and high-speed cameras scan for deviations no wider than a human hair. The system measures diameter, checks roundness, and verifies surface geometry in real time. Operators study the data as each coil passes, comparing it against strict technical standards. If a single inconsistency is found, the entire section is removed. These tests aren't just quality control, they're survival training. Out in the real world, cables endure decades of tension, vibration, and weather. A flaw that passes unnoticed today could mean catastrophe years later. That's why every approved wire is effectively a survivor, tested to a degree most materials will never experience. Once the steel has proven itself, it's ready for the stage where the story turns from metallurgy to geometry, the stranding line. 
Inside a hall that stretches the length of a football field, hundreds of reels of steel wire are mounted on rotating frames. Each reel spins in perfect rhythm, feeding its wire into the heart of a colossal twisting machine. The sound is constant, a low metallic hum, punctuated by the synchronized click of gears and sensors. Here, precision meets choreography. Dozens, sometimes hundreds of wires are drawn together under tension, winding around a central core in a helical pattern that's been mathematically designed to distribute stress. This isn't random twisting. It's structural geometry engineered for perfection. Shameful beforehand, engineers select the core type, the spine of the cable. A solid steel core creates ultra-high tensile strength, used in cranes, bridges, and suspension systems. Synthetic polypropylene cores, on the other hand, are lighter, corrosion-resistant, and better suited for marine environments or renewable energy applications. The process continues in layers. Smaller groups of wires, called strands, are twisted first, then multiple strands are woven together around the core. Sensors continuously monitor the tension and angle of every wire. If one tightens or loosens by even a fraction, the system adjusts automatically in milliseconds. Speed is critical. Move too fast, and the wire deforms under heat and friction. Too slow, and production efficiency collapses. The machinery must balance thousands of pounds of torque and motion to create one continuous masterpiece of precision. Layer by layer, the cable grows. Each section has its purpose. The inner core stabilizes, the middle layer carries the weight, and the outer layer resists abrasion and weather. Together, they form a rope of remarkable resilience, a structure that can flex without breaking, stretch without deforming, and bear hundreds of tons. Watching the final product emerge is like seeing muscle form around bone. What began as lifeless metal has become a living system of strength and flexibility, born from symmetry and science. Shimmer's journey isn't over yet. The freshly stranded wire must now be shielded for its future. Whether that future lies beneath an ocean current, above a mountain bridge, or inside an elevator shaft climbing a city skyline. Before it leaves the line, it receives its final coating of lubricant, a process both simple and essential. The entire cable is drawn through either a bath or a high-pressure spray system where oil or synthetic compounds seep deep between every strand. The speed of the pull is synchronized with flow sensors that ensure even coverage and constant viscosity. For cables destined for marine or high-motion environments, the lubricant is mixed with additives that resist oxidation, water, and electrochemical corrosion. This isn't just oil, it's life support, keeping friction low and internal heat minimal throughout decades of use. By now, the steel is unrecognizable from its humble beginnings in the earth. It's endured heat, pressure, and transformation. Yet one final trial remains, proof through destruction. Emientos in the next phase will witness the final tests, hydraulic tension, cyclic bending, and ultimate failure that separate engineering precision from perfection itself. Before a single cable leaves the factory floor, it must prove itself in battle, not against competitors, but against the very forces it was built to resist, weight, motion, friction, and time. Strength on paper means nothing until it's tested in steel. Immigration, the newly stranded cables are taken to the final inspection and endurance facility, where their integrity will be challenged under the most brutal conditions imaginable. Each coil is mounted into hydraulic test rigs that stretch, twist, and compress the cable as if it were already holding up a bridge. Massive cylinders apply tens of thousands of pounds of pressure, pulling until the metal hums and groans with strain. Sensors record every fraction of movement, every microscopic elongation, until the precise point of failure. Shimmer some cables are pulled until they snap, not to destroy them, but to learn. By measuring the moment of rupture, engineers calculate the true load-bearing capacity. Others are bent and flexed repeatedly in cyclic bending machines, designed to simulate decades of wind, traffic, and weather in a matter of hours. Nearby, micro-strain sensors detect internal fatigue long before the human eye can see it. Billions of these rooms that the quiet dignity of engineering comes to life. Here, data becomes confidence. The guarantee that the bridge won't sway, the elevator won't fail, and the skyline won't fall. And if you've made it this far through the journey, consider subscribing. Because here we show you, not just how things are made,
but how they earn their right to exist. Only the strongest cables survive these trials. Once approved, each coil is transported to the industrial coiling and packaging system, where precision takes on a new scale. The machine resembles a colossal turntable surrounded by rails and sensors. As the cable feeds in, a central controller synchronizes winding speed and tension so that each loop rests perfectly against the last. Any variation could mean slack, and slack is the enemy of safety. Laser displacement sensors watch every movement, ensuring flawless alignment. Cameras scan the surface for scuffs, bends, or crossovers. A transverse guide rail shifts the feed mechanism back and forth, stacking layer upon layer with mathematical precision. Each revolution adds to a rhythm of craftsmanship so refined it feels like performance. When the final loop is complete, hydraulic clamps seal both ends of the cable. A traceability code is printed directly onto the coil core, embedding a permanent record of where, when, and how it was made. Batch data, chemical composition, heat treatment numbers, and tensile strength ratings. Everything is logged. In an industry built on trust, traceability is truth. Packaging follows a ritual of protection. Coils are mounted onto steel or engineered wood pallets, wrapped in heat shrink film or heavy oil cloth to keep out moisture and air. Forklifts glide through the aisles, moving finished coils into a towering storage bay where cranes stack them in perfect formation. From there, they roll onto waiting flatbed trucks or into specialized shipping containers equipped with anti-roll compartments. Each one is a silent promise, a lifeline forged by fire and pressure, destined to hold the weight of nations. It's hard to believe that what began as dull stone in a mine now hums with purpose. Every twist of metal, every grain of zinc, every molecule of iron has been transformed into something that carries more than mass. It carries responsibility. Steel cable doesn't shout for attention. It hides inside bridges, cranes, elevators, ships, and wind turbines. Unseen, but always essential. When a skyscraper elevator glides skyward, or a suspension bridge spans a mile of open water, this is the muscle behind the motion. Tens of thousands of feet of engineered steel, wound tighter than any human hand could manage, yet graceful enough to flex with the wind. What makes this story remarkable isn't the machinery or even the metal. It's the precision of process. Every step along the production line serves one goal, absolute reliability. In the world of heavy engineering, failure isn't an option. Every cable that leaves the factory has already lived a lifetime in testing. It has endured heat beyond volcanoes, tension beyond earthquakes, and compression beyond steel's natural limit all to ensure it will never fail when it matters most. Some of these coils will travel to shipyards, where they'll haul anchors larger than trucks. Others will find their way to construction sites, threading their strength through the bones of skyscrapers. Some will vanish into the infrastructure of power plants or wind farms, converting natural energy into electricity. Wherever they go, their purpose is the same, to connect, to lift, to hold. And as cranes rise and bridges stretch, these cables remind us that progress isn't made by chance. It's engineered, inch by inch, strand by strand. From the iron mines of the earth to the heights of civilization, this is the quiet miracle of metallurgy, the art of turning rock into strength, chaos into structure, and heat into permanence. If you've watched to the end, you're the kind of person who sees the beauty in industry, the order in machinery, the poetry in process. So before you go, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll keep exploring the machines and materials that hold our world together, one unseen story at a time. Because behind every skyline, every bridge, and every moment of motion, there's a cable like this, waiting patiently to prove its worth.